Hi guys, and today I would like to show the work I've done over the past half year. So before we will start, I would also like to say thank you to the following people who helped me with some solutions. Thanks a lot to all and let's start. Over the past half year, I managed to make my own implementation of the Voxel algorithm. It's now a full-fledged Voxel plugin for the game engine Unreal Engine 4. I've added a lot of new stuff and finished many of the basic systems and I'll be sure to share it with the community very soon. Just watch the video to the end, I'll tell you the main information. So, a little precondition. The voxels are 3D pixels that you can change in real time. For example, it can even be compared with the driving inside Paint. Um, I mean Microsoft Paint. Where the pixels on your screen are the voxels and the lines draft are the surface. I'm pretty sure all of you know Minecraft. It's fantastic stuff where you can change or build anything you want. Basically, voxels work like this. We divide the whole area into squares and then we paint squares where our surface will like this. Then we got a square world, just like Minecraft. But Minecraft is a cubic world, not squares. Mm. Ah yes, it's similar, yes, ok, after all action, if we add some interpolation, we will get something like this, and it calls smooth surface, it's not like Minecraft as you can see. In order to turn a cubic world into a smooth terrain, we can use some algorithms. Most of them are based on linear interpolation, and of these algorithms I can highlight our marching cubes, tall contouring and surface nets. At the moment I am using marching cubes and in the future I plan to add other algorithms. Some of them have already been made such as surface nets and I will talk about the basics of the algorithm now because the video will come out too big and I wanted the video to be interesting not for only beginners. So. If you want, I might release a new video in the future where I will tell how to implement surface nets or even tell contouring. But it will be hard, I think, because I should find the kef. Okay, move on. The main obstacle within voxels was the load system. Load is a level of detail. This system helps to avoid creating unnecessary geometry in places that the player won't even see. This way, we save our resources and increase FPS. It's important. Okay, how does it work in simple words? We just decrease the quality of detail in these places that are far from the player's camera and increase it in the places that are closest to the camera. I think it's easy to understand. I spent a lot of time thinking about the implementation of the LOT because LOT is a beautiful system that up to you to make the system faster. There are many methods of optimization and they are all different. I use the priority method which I'll talk about later, don't worry. In the last video you might have seen how quickly the voxel world loads and perhaps it should be optimized, but however I've been cheating a bit and I used some crutches, don't hit me. In fact you can see now this world without crutches, it takes a very long time to load all the chunks and as you can see it takes a very long time to load high levels. When I look at this, I immediately think of the old summer weekdays during which I optimized this system. The whole problem was that initially I removed collisions for all levels except the maximum level. And sometimes I had quite funny moments when the player fell into the world because the chunks hadn't time to load collision. Don't ask me why I didn't originally put some kind of platform under the player to wait for it to load the high levels that have collisions. I just don't know. <laughs> so what the catch when the whole world loads instantly at the start of the game? This method is also used by many games and the main idea is to load all the data before the game starts. The thing is, if you calculate data in the game thread, you will lose FPS, because the game thread is responsible for displaying information on your screen, and if you load it with unnecessary data, it will calculate the data first before displaying the next frame. If the data is large, there will be a large delay between frames. However, we can use this delay for our goals at the beginning of the game. We will calculate all data for the landscape at the very beginning of the game, 
before the user will have the first frames. Ok, let's talk a little more about load. I have now constructed my system so that an oak tree, our irregular tree in two dimensional structure. It means that each hank has its own parent or its own child ring. Thus, my load system now has a beautiful tree like architecture. And I am very happy about that because instead of that, I have something like this. And it's perfect, I think. So let's just see how it works now. Let's think of our game as one big sand. There is a red pawn on the stage and this is the player. We will also place a blue square near the player. Let the blue square be our chunk. So at a certain period of the time we will check the distance between the pawn and the square. The distance can usually be determined by knowing the coordinates of the two objects and their square root. Thus, if the distance is less than number n, let it be number 18 for example, we will divide the square into four parts. Now let's look at the reverse side of what happens when we get four new chunks. Once we've checked the distance between the chunk and the player, we got the coordinate data. After we have to create the physics and the visible mesh of the chunk itself. Thus, all calculations will take the place in async tasks. They are computed in parallel. The output data is sent back to the game thread to spawn the chunk. By the way, I will show you a more detailed scheme of the whole work architecture on the Discord channel. So, do not wait and just join us. Ok, let's talk about priorities. A priority system is needed to properly allocate the importance of tasks between the processor and graphics card. So, the first thing we'll always calculate is basic data. For example, it's computing a chunk or generating new leaves. And all chunks now have a generating priority, which is calculated according to the player's distance to the chunk itself. Thus, the closest chunks are generated first, as you can see. However, it's not also perfect. The system still needs to be refined, and I hope to show the full potential of the system later. My plans are to build priorities for physics and individual data generation. That is, the visible mesh of the chunk will be calculated first, and then the collision and the rest of the physics. And perhaps of the more recent system I can highlight the transvoxel, which definitely deserves its own video. It's a very interesting system where we have to use an algorithm to find neighbors within the oak tree, watch out for collision of threads and work with the data from tables using bitwise operations. As you can see I've finished the system and there are no more holes between the chunks of different lots. All the determines are to smooth out some vertices and calculate the good normals for them. A little about the project itself. I've decided that it will be a standalone plugin for the Unreal Engine 4. Thus, I plan to implement a lot of interesting systems and other stuff. They include especially dual contouring to optimize rendering, as well as a spline system to create caves within the terrain. So, I'll be releasing this very soon. All interesting news concerning the development of the plugin you can find on my Discord channel, as I said later where I am constantly publishing new systems and methods of implementation of interesting systems, which will be in the plugin and here on my channel. I'll answer all your questions and try to help you. Thanks for the watching, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. Bye.